Hey, I want to say welcome. Welcome? Welcome to the Sherry Hollenbeck Podcast. And what I want to do with you right now is so many things, but one of the things is, is I just want to sit down and talk with you. Not as, not, as like a, not as like a coach or just like a teacher. I just want to sit down with you just like you and I were just best friends. And, and you were asking me, Sherry, what's, what, what's, what's one pivotal thing I could do to capitalize on the next decade of my life? What's, what's one thing I can do to help take decades of pain and, 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 and uh, turn it into bliss? And this is what I tell you. This right here is the exact same link. That every single success story out there, the good, the bad, the, the ugly, the insane, the crazy, the one that makes sense, the one that doesn't make sense. The one kind of link is what I'm about to tell you. And so what I want to do just to get started is let's you and I go down a little bit of memory lane. Is that okay? Do you want to come play with me? Do you want to come play? All right, I need you to close your eyes. You can trust me. Are you closing your eyes? <laughs> close your eyes. Okay, here we go. I want you to think back and see if this will recall any of your memories. There was a time where you woke up and at every single news station was this banner that said Haiti had just been hit with a 7.0 magnitude earthquake and 230,000 lives were taken in that moment. You know that? And right after that, there, there, was this, there was this massive article in the newspapers written everywhere that, that said that Barack Obama was pulling all the U.S. troops out of Iraq. Do you remember that part? Some people have pros, some have cons on it. I'm not saying either way. I just, just, just do you remember that intense moment in history? Or maybe you don't because you were too busy getting jacked up and excited about getting this new invention called the iPad. Were you one of those 300,000 people that woke up early to get the iPad, were you? <laughs> and then once you got the iPad, did you happen to download the song called Tick Tock by Kesha? You know? Tick Tock, make it rock. I don't remember the rest of the songs, but do you remember that? Because it played everywhere, on every single plane, every single car, every single home, every single radio. It was tips. And it was everywhere because it had just hit number one on all music boards. And it's kind of catchy. <laughs> so you're like, Sherry, what does that have to do with decisions? What does that have to do with anything? Everything. Let me ask you, how long ago do you think those four events took place? Come on, just tell me. This is not me on the video. This is you and me in your living room. I'm talking directly with you. Tell me, how many years ago do you think that was? One, two, Try a decade. 10 years ago, it was, it was year 2010. Precisely 10 years ago. And so my question I wanna ask you is, is back there in 2010, where were you? Who were you hanging out with? Who were your peers? What were you doing? Where were you located? What were you, what, what were you doing for work? But more importantly, if I have your permission, I'm gonna ask you another question is, Okay, I'm gonna take it as a yes. My question I wanna ask you is, are you where you are at right now, where you thought you were gonna be at when you were in 2010? Meaning the person you wanted to become over the next 10 years, from 2010, your end goal is 2020. Are you the person that you want to become? Did you accomplish everything? you want to accomplish. Just checking. And so at this point, you probably, at this point, you're in one of two categories. Either number one is you're super inspired because you're like, wow, I really did good in 2010 to 2020. Look at all these accomplishments she's having me highlight. Or the other one is you could be in stage seven depression right now. And I'm I am some <laughs> Girl, thanks. I was. But let's ask you a more empowering question. The more empowering question is, we got another 10 years ahead of us. Forget the past. The past does not equal your future. The past does not equal your, 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 what you're gonna accomplish. So let's think about some more empowering questions like where are you gonna be at in the next 10 years? Who are you gonna become? What do you wanna achieve? Where do you wanna live? What do you wanna accomplish? 
Do you know? Have you started asking yourself these questions? And if not, when's right now a good time to start asking these questions? Right now. When's now a good time? Right now! Just let me tell you this. The next 10 years is going to show up. And you're gonna be there, I'm gonna be there. The question is where are we gonna be at? You know, in 10 years from now, are you gonna be looking at the, the last decade of your life in 2020 to 2030 and being in this utter bliss because of everything you've developed into? Or are you gonna be disturbed? And see, what's gonna make the difference between that insane amount of bliss and this disturbed emotion? What's gonna make the difference? What's gonna make the difference when it becomes that person you wanna become or, or whether it's just a decade, another decade just lost? What's gonna be the difference? And it comes down to a word called decisions. Hell, let me help you validate this point. So, so right now, think about the last 10 years. Maybe you got married. Maybe you chose not to get married. But what happens if you were to make these decisions differently? Instead of saying yes, you said no. Instead of saying no, you said yes. You know, instead of moving town, maybe you decided to stay in town. Or maybe what would happen if you decided to move instead of stay? What would happen if you would have went for that job? What happens if you went and went to that concert where you met your now wife? How would saying yes or no to these different decisions and forks in your road impacted you today? Would you like to be drastically different? And the answer is yes. And how can I say this is because, let me introduce you to Cher Hall in the back in 2010. <laughs> hang in there, hang in there. I'm gonna do a little bit of suffering here because I do each time I tell this story. But, 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 but 2010, Sherry Hall in the back was, I was living in a small town in the middle of nowhere called Gillette, Wyoming. And I was in this relationship I was, I was living with this guy that I didn't love, but I liked him. And I knew that it was never gonna go anywhere, but I just stayed with it for just for just, just the convenience, for the fear of being alone. So I sacrificed my integrity, I, I, I sacrificed my principles just to meet this false sense of security. That's, that's how pathetic I was. Yeah. <laughs> I was also envisioning what my life was gonna be like in the next 10 years, by 2020, you know, the homes, the cars, the, 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 the relationship. I wanted the guy, I wanted the car, I wanted the house, I wanted the success story. But I knew I would never get it because I wasn't that type of person. I wasn't born into the resources. I wasn't born into the, the, the DNA required. I wasn't, I wasn't born with the connections. That wasn't me. But what was so painful about it was I would go to these grocery stores and there's all these different magazines with all these people that have unlimited resources. They had the money, the connections, the DNA, and, and, and they had everything I wanted. They had the guy, they had the car, they had the home, they had the success story, they had the impact. And they could have it, but I couldn't have it. And to see me when it's so bad, even though I'd never get it, and seeing all these other people get it, It's like opening up a gash in your arm and, and grinding salt into it. And every time it would scab over you, just pour some more salt into it and just keep grinding it. That's how painful it was. And, and, and it wasn't just that whole thing about I knew I could never get what I want, but it was like life kept happening to me, it kept lifing on me. And, and I remember getting the phone call and this is where it all seemed to start. And, and my grandmother, I've been driving to town and she got killed by this drunk driver. She was my idol, by the way. And then it was like we were just recovering from that. And then there was this, this slamming on the side of my house and, and this crowbar was trying to pry open the door. And it was the EMTs uh, trying to get in to put my dad onto a stretcher because he was found unresponsive by my mother. Turns out he had had a grand mal seizure and it's gonna be a long road to recovery. And so just as soon as we were trying to figure out as he was a sole provider, like how are we gonna make our life work? And next thing you know, my brother, who we were inseparable, he ended up disappearing. And we couldn't find him anywhere. 
12 hours later, we found them walking down the road and, and something was wrong. And, and I remember we checked him into the hospital and, and 13 doctors later, we found out he had gotten diagnosed with the same condition. You know, my, my grandmother on my other side had got diagnosed with the same condition that multiple of my uncles had got con, uh, diagnosed with and that was called schizophrenia. It was like all the stuff we were trying to balance. <laughs> And it just seems so unjust. Like my grandma had never done anything wrong. My brother had never done anything wrong. My dad is like the same of all saying, why did this stuff all happen, have to happen to me? Why did, why did it happen to happen to us? And I was trying to hold things together. So I was going to college and I was working two jobs. And one of the jobs was, a, a, I worked at the coal mine 12 hours a day. I was driving those big trucks. And one night on night shift, I was just so exhausted. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I woke up to being extracted out of this twisted metal of what was left of the hull truck being wrapped around a bridge. And three days later, I'd gotten my, my, my termination letter saying I had fallen asleep at the will. I don't know how long it had been since I'd slept. And <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was, it, 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 I can't even explain to you. I'm sure I'm sure this is nothing compared to what some of you guys watching this have been through. But for me, it was just validation. I was a victim to my circumstances. There's nothing I could ever do to get ahead because I wasn't lucky enough to have the resources. And so I decided to settle for this county position, this county job at the Calma County Sheriff's Department. Because it was a secure thing to do. You either work in the coal mine or the, for the county in my hometown. And... Year after year after year after year went by when I would see all these people come into the jail facility and, and be victims of their circumstances as well. And, and, and it was one night of this compounding, seeing all these generation after generation after generation destroyed by their circumstances they were born into, that I heard this story. And the story was this guy was getting interviewed and this guy had been in and out of prison his whole entire life. And uh, the interviewer wanted to ask them, ask him, uh, how did you end up in these conditions? By the same time, the interviewer later on that day was going to have another interview with this guy's twin brother. And so one brother was actually in prison. He was currently incarcerated for like attempted murder and breaking and entering and all sorts of stuff. He'd done it his whole entire life and that was his life. Then the other brother was actually a six-figure earner and some corporate staff with three kids, a wife, super loving family. Twin brothers, two totally different lives. And the investigator just wanted to come in and say, okay, so tell me, tell me, how did you turn out like this? And here's what he said. Here's actually what both of them said. And they didn't know each other were being interviewed. How did you turn out like this? And they both said, with a childhood like mine, how could I have turned out any other way? Both of these guys had zero resources. They were born into this, this generation that was crime and violence and alcoholism and poverty. But, but, but the only difference between the brother one, brother two, the only difference was their decisions. Now what does this all mean is once I, once I saw that point, I realized it was done. I look back and all of a sudden there's clarity and all these different little tiny decisions I was doing. These decisions to focus on what I can't control versus what I can. These decisions to focus on all my losses versus all my gains. So these decisions, you know, to push the snooze instead of get up, to, 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 to not go for the job, to not, to not go for the business, to, to, not, to not go. All these little tiny decisions built up to position me in this life today. So it was not my resources, my lack of resources that molded my life at that point. It was, it, it was my lack of being able to make a decision. It was, it was my lack of <laughs> making decisions that were serving me because I was making decisions. Everyone's making decisions. You're making decisions right now, whether consciously or unconsciously. And by the way, not making a decision, you're making a decision. It's just, are your decisions serving you or are they not serving you? And if the last 10 years of your life, listen to me right here because I'm saying this because I'm saying it to myself. The last 10 years of your life, it did not go, if it did not go how you wanted to go, it's because you had this pattern of making decisions that did not serve you. It's not the big decisions, these little tiny decisions, decisions to make the call, the decision to say, I love you, the decisions to say, I'm done, these decisions to say, let's hang in there, the decisions to say, yes, the decisions to, wake up early. These little tiny decisions, they compound into either serving you or not serving you.
If you love the last 10 years of your life, then congratulations. Give me a high five right there because you have a pattern of making decisions that serve you. The problem is 10 years ago, I did it until that moment in time. And I made that decision that I was done. I was only gonna make decisions that serve me. Is it? <laughs> There's no other options. And whenever I say decision, it's not something that I wanted to do. Because things that you want to do, you want to go make money, you want to go get the guy, you want to go, you want to go lose weight, you want to go get fit, you want, you want to go have success. But within 10 seconds, you get distracted by some sort of reality show. The Tiger King. At the time of this podcast, I'm doing right now, there's something called Tiger King, which is the worst waste of time I could ever even imagine anybody would want to do. And all it is, is it's an ideal example. I haven't seen it. I've just seen a trailer disclaimer, but it's the example of how not to do life. The example on lies and theft and, and potential murder, uh, bad relationships, and there's some tigers in there apparently as well. And the reason why people like those is because they validate that they don't need to change. They validate that they don't need to make decisions. They validate that, you know what, compared to those people, I really don't need to make the decision to make more money. Compared to those people, I really don't need to make the decision to level up my relationship. Compared to those people, I'm doing pretty good. That's why people get addicted to watching those reality shows of all these screwed up people. It makes them feel good about themselves and validate why they why they, why they they need to say the exact same, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Can you tell me excited about this? It, it validates their decision that they wanted, that they need to keep the next 10 years just like the last 10 years. So, where do we go from here? For me, that moment I made that decision, 24 months later, I made my first million. Today I've got the guy, I've got the sports car, I've got the 5,700 square foot house I'm currently filming right now. And I I, I, I have a success story that I want to dream about. And, and, and I see that not to go and impress you because there's people who have done way more than I will ever accomplish. I say to impress upon you the power of what one decision can make. When I say decision, I mean to cut off all ends. There's no option you're not gonna do it. There's no option it's too hard, let's fail. There's no option that, that it's, it's taking too long, I'm done. There's no option that I'm getting tired that you just keep going, 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 going. When it doesn't work, you redirect. And you go, go, go. When it doesn't work, you redirect. And then you go, go, go. When it doesn't work, you go redirect, redirect, redirect. And you just keep going until it's done. That's what called making a decision is. And see, the reason is, if it's that simple, if it's that simple, why doesn't more people go make decisions? Change your decisions, change your life. Let's just make decisions that serve you. It's so simple, Sherry. Why don't more people do it? Because the first thing I just said, more people are wanting to do things versus actually making a decision to do things. Number one, more people are actually wanting to do something instead of actually making a decision to go do something. The second thing <laughs> is they're too busy making excuses. <laughs> like, like, let me ask you this right now. Let's go make a decision right now. What's something you've been holding off on? Something you want to get done, but you haven't been able to get done. Something small or something big. Just, just make a decision right now and, and say you're going to do it. But whenever you say you're going to do it, it's not like, uh, I might do it or I'll be happy if I do it. I'm not going to do it no matter what. Try it right now. And see, right now, some of the things that just flashed into your head might have been like, oh, shoot, Sherry, I'm too old to start that thing. Or maybe I'm too young. Nobody will listen to me. Or maybe, gosh, I don't have enough money right now to invest. Or maybe I have I have too much money to, to risk putting myself in that position. Or maybe you say you're not very smart. Or maybe you say you're too smart. You need to go think about this decision for like another 10,000 years. So number two reason is because people are too busy making excuses to actually make a decision. And the third and final one is, in my opinion, is, is that they don't have any muscle in making the decisions. Don't look at my muscle. <laughs> but it's just like a physical muscle. If you want to go have big biceps, the purpose of having big biceps is to go look good and pick up heavy stuff. <laughs> but what happens if you don't work out the biceps? Then you lose them. And whenever you go to go pick something up heavy, you can't pick it up no matter how hard you want because you haven't prepared it, you haven't exercised it, you haven't strengthened it. But what happens is there's a muscle called a decision-making muscle. And if you haven't exercised it, well, let me ask you this. When's the last time you've exercised making a decision model? You said, I'm going to do it, and then you actually executed it. When's the last time? And I don't say this to be so direct to you. I say this because I want a wake-up call because that's what I needed. 
I wish someone would woke me up, you know, five, six, seven, eight years sooner than when I was woke up. But when's the last time you made a decision? See, most people, they have no decision-making muscle, so they physically can't make a decision because they're so used to making this pattern of complacency or procrastination or it's okay if I don't do this, it's, or they justify it by these reality shows, or they, or they justify it by their upbringing, you know, it's okay for mom and dad, it should be okay for me. So the question is, you know, I've told you all these reasons why people can't make decisions. Sure, can you tell me, how can I make a decision? And it starts with making a decision right now. Let's go back to it. Let's make something. And just to help take off some of the other excuses that some people might make, i.e. I made, is you're saying, Sherry, what about those things I just told you about how to overcome the lack of resources? And let me tell you this, resources have nothing to do with what you can accomplish, nothing. It is not what you have access to, it's not the money, it's not the network, it's not your circumstances of what has taken place in your life, it's your decisions on what you're gonna do. Let me tell you the story. <laughs> There's this guy, he was born, and whenever he was a boy, he was actually kidnapped by the Nazis and imprisoned in the Nazi facility. And most people that was in prison with him, uh, it was a death sentence, and, and with him somehow his dad had actually paid off one of the guards and got him out and he had to escape and travel over to America with nothing other poverty, and that's an understatement to say poverty. That guy today, is now one of the most successful investors in US history. His name is George Soros. Or what about this other guy that was born, a little boy that was born over in New York, the bad side of town. And he was born into such extreme conditions that whenever he fell sick, his mom and dad could not afford to feed him. So they had to give their child away to some relatives in Chicago. That guy today <laughs> is a co-founder of Oracle, Larry Ellison. The guy's worth $46.1 billion. How's that for born into nothing? Or what about, let me just live out with just one more story. One more story, is that okay? This kid that was in and out of gangs his whole entire childhood, uh, what, what was, as a certain one in 1923, he was living in and out of his car, trying to sell shampoo by cold knocking on doors. Fast forward to today, this guy owns one of the largest shampoo companies in the world. It's known as Paul Mitchell. But he's not hasn't just tapped in that. He's also went into the alcoholic beverage. And uh <laughs> enough said there. Three billion dollars worth is what he is worth. And so, and so, so, so the point they say this is it has nothing to do with what you have access to. All those excuses you have in your head, they're not done. Like they're non-existent. But it has everything to do with your decisions you're making. And I want to point out is the decision to not make a decision. Look down there, look down there. The decision to not make a decision is actually you're making a decision. And that pattern might have been why you aren't where you were at right now, where you want to be at in 2010. You say that, you'll screw that up too. <laughs> so I want to point out, it is not your circumstances, it's your decisions that mold your life. And it, it comes down to this right here is, 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 to be totally transparent, every single one of you guys watching this, you have the ability to make decisions. This most powerful thing is not something you need to go, like go buy or you're only a few people are lucky enough to be born with. It's everybody has these, that's this power for them to make a decision. And again, a decision means to cut off from all other ways. And right now, actually you're making a decision right this second, three decisions, conscious, unconsciously right now. And the three decisions right now that you're, you're unconsciously making is a decision on what to focus on. Whew. It's getting hot in here. The decision on what to focus on. Are you focusing on what you can control or what you can't control? Are you focusing on what you have or what you've lost? By the way, loss and kind of control equals suffering. Are you focusing on the past and all the failures or the present or the future? What are you focusing on? The second decision you're making right now is what events? What do they mean to you? Somebody cuts you off in traffic, does that mean that they're trying to kill you and disturb your bodily safety? 
If so, you're going to have a pretty good reaction and pretty a pretty opposite reaction towards if you were to put the meaning behind them cutting you off as, man, that guy must be totally overwhelmed and stressed. I feel sorry for him. I know I've been there before. Let me say a prayer for him. Two totally different meanings. Same event, two different meanings, two different emotional reactions to those. Did you realize you could change your meanings? You could pick your own meanings? Your kid coming into the office. Does that mean that they're trying to irritate you or does it mean that they love you and they miss you? Same event, two different meanings. How do you decide to choose your meanings? And the third thing you're focusing on at all times is, is what are you going to do now? Events take place. You got your meaning. You're focusing in a certain direction. What are you going to do now about it? Are you going to sit there and procrastinate another decade of your life? You're going to do something about it. Are you going to decide to make a decision right now? By the way, have you made a decision right now? I'm just, I'm just curious if you haven't, you need to stop this audio, this podcast, this video, this YouTube. You need to stop it and make a decision right now. Just something small. And, and, and by the way, let me tell you this is don't worry about trying to make the wrong decision. You can't screw up this whole decision making process. And let me tell you this is look at this quote right here is the, the success is a result of good judgment. Obviously, good judgment is the result of experience. But experience is the result of bad judgment. And any successful person out there will tell you, if they're transparent with you, I'll tell you this, is the only reason why I've had more success than you, if that's the case, or other people have had more success than you, if that's the case, is that they have made more bad judgments than you have. That's it. And so you just go out there, just go screw it up, just go start making a whole bunch of these decisions. And, and, and what happens is, the question always that everyone always asks me is like, okay, Sherry, so um, let me go start making all these decisions, but how long is this going to take me before I can go get the guy, go get the girl, go get the home, go get the house, go get the, go get the success story, go fill the accomplishment. How long before it's going to work? And let me ask you this is, how long do you want to take? When I was 24 years old, I got introduced to this concept called network marketing. And I looked at this income sheet of what people were actually making. And I looked at this level, it was a top level. And I said, that one, because it's making $10,000 a month. And I don't know about you, but I've never met anybody that had made $10,000 a month at that point in my life. Like, it's not pretty cool. And I said, I want to make that. He said, okay. And I said, how long is it going to take me? He said, how long do you want it to? I said, okay, well, can you give me some like averages? What do most people do? And he said, well, on average, you're supposed to show this presentation, this video 15 times a month. And do it month after 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 month. I said, okay. And so I thought 15 presentations a month and in a full year, that'd be 180 presentations. What happens if I do 180 presentations in one month? That means I would have one year experience in a month. So let's just do that every single month. So my very first year, I did 180 every single month. And so I technically had 12 years of experience in one year. And so I did it my second year. And also my second year, I had 24 months of experience uh, or 20, 24 years of experience in two years. And then I did my third month. So my third month, I had 36 years of experience, which resulted in not one top position, but two top positions in the company. And I was the number one enroller out of 80,000 people in the company internationally. There's nothing special about me. I just wanted it to go faster. <laughs> How long do you want to take? That's my question. That's my question. Back over to you. So let's go ahead and go to this. Is, is how do you, where do you go from here? And I want to show you this four-step formula. And this four-step formula, if you're at the point where you're ready to make a decision, this four-step formula <laughs> will change your life. And I can say this is the number one formula in all existence because it wasn't mine. <laughs> I took somebody that had massive success and I just modeled them. This is given to me by one of my coaches, uh, Mr. Diaz. And what he said is step number one is you need to find out what you want. What do you want? Something big or small. It doesn't matter if it's wrong. Just do it. Just write down one thing that you want. After that, uh, go find somebody that has what you want in that success field and do exactly what they did. Just model them and do all out massive action. So whenever you find out what they did, just all out massive action and what they did, just copy them. Third thing is find out what's working and what's not working. 
That's it. What's, what's getting your results, what's not getting your results. And, and the fourth and final thing is whatever is working for you, do a lot more of it. Just keep doing that. Keep throwing out the bad, keep more good. Throw out the bad, keep more good. And you just use over and over and over and over and over. And that right there, that right there is how I've achieved every single thing in my life. It's called the success formula. And this is not just what I've done. I've seen multiple other successors. This is the one key thing. This is the one key link that, that all these good stories, bad stories, the insane stories of all these successes, that's one key thing that you do. And see, the question is, where do you start? And it starts by making a decision right now. But what if you don't? What if you want to wait? What if you want this just to be another video you watch or just another podcast you listen to? What if, what if you're in that category? Well, let me tell you the story. Not that you'd be in that category. Maybe some, if you some your friends you're talking to is in that category. Let me tell you the story. And it's a story called The Boiling Frog. Have you heard of The Boiling Frog? Come on, shout out. Have you heard of The Boiling Frog? Okay. Boiling Frog. The frog jumps in the water. And it's lukewarm water. And what happens is, slowly, microscopically, the water gets turned up half a degree by half a degree, half a half a degree. And it's such a slow increments that the frog doesn't even notice that the water is getting turned up. In our life, we make these decisions. Decisions to say yes versus no. Decision to hit this news button versus wake up. The decision to say yes versus no. These, these little tiny decisions that, that when we're in that moment, it doesn't really seem like it's impactful, but it's just over and over. And it's happening so slowly, we don't realize. The frog doesn't realize. And then the temperature keeps getting cranked up higher and higher and higher and higher, and the frog has no idea what's going on. Until it's about one degree away from boiling, and the final clip goes, and the frog realizes he's in boiling water. But it's too late to get out. He's dead. How does this relate? Every single way! Right now, every single decision you're making is either turning up that thermometer or turning it down. Every single decision you're making, you're either you're either you're either developing what you want to be in 2030 or you're not. Every single decision matters. It's the small things, not the big things. The decision, 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 decision to say yes, decision to say no, decision that to make yourself do a decision to make yourself fall through, the decision to say no, I don't want you. The decision to give yourself a pass, these little tiny decisions are gonna be what's gonna shape who you're gonna be in 2030. So if that's it, if you're ready, I open you and invite you to make a decision right now. Just something small, that's your action step. But a decision is not a decision unless you marry with an action. If it's just a, a decision, it's just something you're, you're, you'd like to do. If it's a decision, then you match an action to it. <laughs> See, there's a time to where you can just make all these, you know, I like to things. You can go learn everything. But see, gathering up all this knowledge, it's, you don't have any execution behind it. It's just a pathetic excuse for thinking about progress. Action is everything. So, so what I want you to ask you to do is make a decision. If, if you want 2030 to be a different, or if you want to hit your goals in 2030, what do I know? But my recommendation would be that to make a decision right now and then match it with an action. As soon as you make a decision, go make that call or go put down that deposit or go set that appointment or go 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 do something to help marry the decision with the action. Because in closing is 2030 will arrive. We'll all be there. The question is where will you be? So with that said, I appreciate you paying attention, listening all the way right here. You like what you like what we're gonna be delivering? I wanna collaborate and I wanna get to know you. You get to know, know, know you. Just like now as a coach, but just, just as friends. And you can like and share and subscribe below. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.